Derek Brown here with another Beatbox Sax Tuesday tutorial for you. Today I'm going to be talking about a technique called ghosted notes or ghost notes or ghost tonguing and as the name kind of implies uh, it's going to be kind of a it's it's an, an alternate alternate way of um, playing a note that sounds more muted um, or just quieter and uh, kind of you alter it with your regular playing tone and kind of adding some variety, kind of like when we talk with different syllables and consonants, um, kind of bringing that vocal element to the saxophone. Uh, it's probably most commonly used in straight ahead jazz, um, but also in kind of R&B, rock and roll kind of sax playing. Maybe some people might think of it as being a little bit more old school, uh, but it's still common, very common today. Uh, very useful thing to learn. Uh, a lot of times you'll see this written out uh, if you play in a jazz big band, um, you'll see uh, certain notes with parentheses around them. Maybe maybe a lower note in a set of notes with a parenthesis, or a lower note in a set of notes and it's got an X instead of the regular round note head. Uh, and that's referring to the ghosted notes. So you might see something like uh, playing an enclosure, playing an F, E flat, E, C. So F, E flat, E, that E flat, that lower note, uh, a lot of times, jazz musicians want that note to be a little bit softer. They don't want to emphasize that as much. So instead of going, they would maybe aim for something like, now a lot of big band directors working with younger students will often just say, oh, that means finger the note, but don't really sound the note. And so you just have this kind of ghost of it where it's this kind of, but that can kind of cut off the note, and in jazz we're going for as legato and smooth tonguing as possible. Um, so as people develop and they uh, get more advanced on the saxophone, then they learn this idea, different ways of doing these ghost notes. Now I've seen a video of a guy uh, where he talks about uh, kind of dropping his jaw back, kind of like doing a subtone just on those ghosted notes. Um, probably the most common way though is using the tongue and using kind of a wider surface area of the tongue and not as hard of the tongue uh, to kind of mute the reed where it still vibrates but the tongue is kind of holding it back a little bit. Uh, so what you're going to do, and I, I often think of, well first of all when we tongue we often use the syllable T, ta, ta, ta. If you do T in slow motion, ta. Ta. There's a moment where no air is getting through. Now with ghosting, air is always going to be passing through. So I think of it more as like an L. La, 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 la. Now when I'm alternating the open and the L, you still hear sound. It's just the L, the tongue is up to the roof of my mouth, but it's still allowing air to pass through. So that's kind of what's happening against the reed. And also with the L, it uses more surface area compared to the T. So if you kind of think of that L, that might be effective. Um, so when practicing this, try to play, just play a normal note. Um, also you'll find probably that the lower range of the saxophone, kind of mid to lower range of the saxophone will be easier at the beginning. Um, it's definitely possible to ghost note, to ghost uh, any note on the saxophone, um, but it's def I would recommend starting on the lower register. So maybe like a low G on the sax, and this could be tenor, alto, soprano, doesn't matter. Play that G open, and then slowly move up your tongue. Think of that L, or just think of your regular tonguing, but just go so slowly and don't go as far as to where it's going to shut off the air. And you, it's gonna—it's such a subtle amount. It's just—I mean, we're talking millimeters or half of millimeters of how much your tongue is going to move. But you'll find that as the more you practice this, it just become second nature. Your your tongue will have that muscle muscle memory of how far to go. So see if you can kind of just slowly mute it while still pushing lots of air through and don't ever stop the air. Now you may notice the pitch going up a little bit um, or maybe going down and so you can adjust for that. But that's okay if the, if the intonation changes a little bit because we're kind of going for some tonal variety when playing. Um, another common way of using these instead of just kind of as the bottom part of a line like 
uh, is just holding one note and kind of like you're tonguing it multiple times, kind of just hold that note and kind of ghost it. This is used a lot in the R&B scene. So like... So that's just holding a note. So once again, hold that note. Now you'll probably notice if this is new for you that when you just put a little bit of the tongue on there it's going to kind of tickle the tongue and that's because that reed is vibrating and so it's kind of just going on and off that tongue really fast but as you kind of put more surface area on that and on the, on the reed because you're going to need a wider area of your tongue between the reed some people actually will stick their tongue way forward which kind of even does a more extreme version of that um so mess around with that. Once you can do it on the G, and of course, like anything else, it's a slow process. Once you can do it on the G, uh, move up chromatically down and see if you can if if you can uh, do it on different notes. Uh, and then maybe try doing kind of some scalar things. Maybe start with it on when you first blow air. See if you can move to that where you can start with the ghost tongue, then open. That's what I was doing at the opening little bit of this video. <laughs> And just also highly recommend listening to the masters. Now, pretty much all the great jazz musicians, uh, saxophone players, are doing that ghosting from time to time. Um, and then a lot of the R&B sax players do this as well. A lot of the smooth jazz guys do it as well. Uh, so check it out, and hopefully uh, you can pick up the idea of ghosting notes. So happy practicing, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.